Happy Tuesday night, everyone, and thank you so much for joining Seasons Sunflower Hour. We're happy you're back with us. And if you're new to the show, welcome. Make sure you guys click the follow button. You, will, you do not want to miss an episode. I want to start by saying thank you to some very, very important people. And those are the ones that donated on our last episode of Sunflower Hour. So to Swedish Cheese... <laughs> And Laura McKee, thank you so much for your donations. We really appreciate it more than we can say. And outside of our last episode, I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but we did reach our first milestone. So I had to do a try not to laugh challenge. So if anyone knows me, you know how incredibly impossible that was of a journey for me. But can I just say, I hope that she is watching this tonight. Sabrina Johnson, my challenger, who was so confident that she was going to win, we raged some pretty horrible things, and I just have to say that I beat Sabrina. So Sabrina, if you're watching, ha, 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 I beat you. And I have to say, this is really exciting because everybody was against me. We put polls out there. Everyone chimed in and said that Sabrina was going to beat me. So I'm going to say it again, Sabrina, I won. <laughs> and not only did I win and not have to eat an onion like an apple because I despise them, it probably would have killed me, but we raised such an amazing amount. I think it was $230 we raised during that bonus episode of Season Sunflower Hour. So I do want to say thank you to those that donated for that. The win the whites, I'm sorry, Thor's grandma, Thor, Alyssa Murphy, Mr. Chris, Ashton, and then Mr. and Mrs. Chris. Thank you everyone for donating from the bottom of our hearts. All of your money goes to serving everyone in our community with ALS helping provide them everything for free. I never get tired of saying that. All of the services the chapter provides are free and we continue to do so because of amazing donations like this. So thank you so much. Feel free to keep them coming, guys. If you're watching the show tonight and you're amped and you're as excited as we are and wait till you hear these stories tonight, you're gonna be even more excited. Please check out our Tiltify campaign where you can donate. All the money goes straight to the chapter. Like I said, all the services the chapter provides are free. Sam's gonna go ahead I think, oh, she already did it. She beat me to the punch. She put the link right there in the comments. All you have to do is click on that. We make it real easy and you can donate to our Tiltify campaign and help get us to our next goal because every time we meet a new goal on this campaign, I have to do something else crazy. So let's see what's next. Also, you can sponsor a bucket if you want to see the ice water get thrown on me for the anniversary of the ice bucket challenge. I'm not excited about it, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it for ALS. So the more buckets we raise, you can put company name, logo in memory of, we get as many buckets as we can, and I have to take all of them. <laughs> So if you're kind of upset or annoyed with me, make sure you check that out because you can throw cold water on me. It'll be really fun. Also, I want to remind everybody that it is Walk to Defeat ALS time. Time is ticking down before the first walk kicks off on June 5th. So it is still available for you to get in on this. And the beauty of the walk, guys, is it's virtual this year. So you do not have to come out to one location. You can do this from wherever you are anywhere in the world. You get to just get your friends, get your family. You know what? Do it by yourself. You can walk around your block, your neighborhood. You can walk wherever you want. It's all virtual and it is completely free to sign up. There are no minimums of money that you have to raise for the charity. So if you don't even raise a cent, it's okay. You can still join in spreading awareness, getting out, getting active, posting pictures of you taking the walk. And if all that wasn't good enough, Team captains of walk teams all get a surprise in the mail. They get a superhero box packed with tons of great stuff. So make sure you check it out. You can go to the website, alsachicago.org for all the information on how to sign up. Or if you're interested in doing so and, and it's a little bit confusing, uh, go ahead and pop it in the comments because we can connect you right now with who you need to be connected to to sign up for your walk team. It's as simple as that. Sam will be monitoring those comments and let us know where you're watching from. We wanna know that too. Who's watching, who's checking us out and where are you tuning in from? Make sure you put that in there. Yes, someone will be walking. I love that. That is good to know. I will also, I will be walking too. I'm gonna get my butt out there and walk around for a great cause. So I want you to do it with me. Okay. I got a lot of that. I, I'm so excited, guys. So tonight is going to be kind of a whirlwind because we've got so many cool guests on tonight. And, ah, uh, hi, Chris. 
Thanks for joining in. I'm so glad you're back and part of this family. Chris was on a past episode. I think it was last week already. My days are just blending together already. So Chris, thanks for tuning back in. And I am so glad that you are going to be walking. Okay. Let's dive in because I know you guys are all here not to listen to me talk about silly stuff, but you're here to get to know our guests. And I don't blame you because there's some really great ones again tonight. Now, life brings people together just when you need them most. You know that saying, right people at the right time? I'm a huge believer in that. And that is exactly what happened for my very first guest tonight. These three ladies happen to cross paths because of a horrendous disease. But the love, support, and friendship that came out of it has proven to be completely priceless. Anne lost her mother to ALS in 2009, and unfortunately, that is not the last time her life was touched with ALS. Her husband, Dan, was diagnosed in 2014 and lost his battle with ALS soon after. In 2013, Meredith's husband, Bruce, a successful CEO of an engineering company, was diagnosed with ALS. Bruce courageously fought and battled ALS for almost six years before losing his battle in 2019. And our very own wonderful angel, as she has been dubbed by both of our upcoming guests, she's an RN and BSN, and she is our very own Care Services Director. I am joined with all three ladies. So please welcome to our show, Ann Saunders, Meredith Lindgren, and Jemana Barodi. Hi, ladies. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us on. Oh, I am so excited about this. You have no idea. And what's really exciting to me is that I get to have all four of you together because like I said, your paths really did cross in, in a horrible way, but it brought all of you two together. So I'm really excited to get to talk about all of that. So let's kick it off by, you know what? I'm gonna throw it to you, Jermana, first. How did you find your way to the ALS Association's Greater Chicago Chapter? Well, it's a long story. I don't know how much time you have, but I'm gonna make it short. <laughs> Uh, it was an accident, actually. I um, I was working um, in my previous life at the University of Chicago in the clinical side of ALS, and I was thrown in there by accident. But um, in 2009, uh, shortly after the association uh, had, or the chapter had uh, connected with the University of Chicago to start clinic there. Um, and I had this uh, communication with them and I was introduced to them shortly after that. I was forced into retirement because the funding to my position was gone after the financial crash. So I decided instead of working somewhere else what I didn't have a passion for, I took a time off and I was at home. And um, I think at that time the chapter was growing and they were who help and so they to me based on we are we are so glad you found your way to us seriously and i think these two ladies right here are really really glad that you found your way to us uh speaking of these two ladies and you and i talked and and you said that you met your husband, yeah. Dan, passed away of ALS. You guys met in high school. Uh, do you happen to remember what was your first impression of Dan? And, and did it happen to be accurate? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, as accurate as can be, I met him. Uh, well, actually, I knew him through some mutual friends. But um, he had a very strong personality and uh, was overall pretty charming. So it was easy to say yes mm -hmm. to the date. <laughs> <laughs> Easiest yes you've ever said, I'm sure, next to his proposal. <laughs> I love it. Meredith. Yeah. Meredith, how about you? Tell me about Bruce. Oh, boy. Uh, I met Bruce at Purdue when we were both engineering students. Um, I helped him rush the fraternity because I was a little sister there. And my first impression of him was he was very straight laced. He walked really straight. I thought he was maybe an ROTC or something. Um, but he's a, he was an athlete. He was a runner, so that's really what happened there. And we didn't start dating until um, a couple of years after that because we were both dating other people. Ah, but, isn't but, that funny how life works out sometimes? <laughs> oh, yeah. But I, I kind of had a crush on him before we started dating because we had been study partners because we were both in engineering, and I just 
he was just always so nice. He was very pleasant. He was, he treated people nicely. Um, I just really liked being with him. Aww. And Damana, you got to meet Dan and Bruce. Do you remember, or what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear their names? I think poor Jomana's frozen. Oh, <laughs> Jomana, we lost you. Oh, it's no. okay. You know, you know what, Jomana, you'll be back. I have faith. Don't worry. And, and Meredith, that just means we get to spend I'm more back. time. <laughs> oh, you're back. back. I hear her. <laughs> we hear you talking. Are you back with us? Oh, yes. Um, so Dan, I think Dan, you think of uh, direction, uh, driving direction and ways, because he taught me how to use the app. But it think of that. This is I, like a game. I'm a person who, I'm what? You're in and out, Jumana. You're in it, Jumana. This is like a game. We get to play. What is Jumana saying? I think I'll text night. her. I think I'll text <laughs> her and say, Jumana, <laughs> go upstairs. <laughs> yeah, there you so, go. It, Oh, as the internet, the, if you watch, I think it was our last show or two shows ago. I don't really, my days are confused. I lost the internet. Uh, the internet has been out to get us. This is what happens on a live show. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, for, I, for my think what Jamana was telling me on that story is that when she thinks of Bruce, she thinks of directions because no, that was Dan. <laughs> oh, Dan. Dan. Gosh, Dan. So Dan taught her how to use ways, which I don't even know or have used. So um, that would have come in handy in my life, I'm sure. So I love that. He was the man with directions. <laughs> That's You know what? Everyone needs someone like that in their life. Okay. So speaking of Dan, and this is, uh, I hate even saying this, and we had someone else on our show that's had multiple ALS issues in their family. I don't even know how to say it because I'm just, I'm so mad even having to say this, but your mom was diagnosed with ALS in 2007. She passed away in 2009 from ALS. So you and Dan really saw firsthand what that means, what it means for your family, for your life, what she went through. Did that prepare you at all? I mean, for the unimaginable, now you have to deal with this. Your husband's been diagnosed. Did that, did seeing what your mom went through help you at all with what you and Dan were about to go through? Um, helped in the sense that it at least prepared us and we knew, but it was also awful because I'm sure as Meredith can attest to that, uh, you know, recreating that journey or anticipating that yeah. it was awful. I mean, from the moment that he said, and I feared when he said my leg is not following me and he thought it was due to his disc uh, of a history of a disc problem. And I thought, I hope it's your disc and not ALS. So it, was just so oddly similar, but yeah. That's crazy. And I don't know, I mean, I, preparing is even the wrong word because I really think no, there's no amount of preparation that can get you ready for this ALS diagnosis. Because as we said before on the show, there is no cure. So you know what the end, the end result is gonna be the same for everybody. It's, it's just how it progresses. And that's what we're trying to fight to change. So I am so sorry. I mean, I'm sorry for all of you, but I'm so sorry that you've had to deal with this multiple times in your life because this stinks. Oh, this just really, really stinks. And so as we were talking sort of on the phone about all this that you went through, I know that with your mom's diagnosis, you were working with organizations. So you've worked with multiple organizations. What do you feel like sets the ALS Association's Chicago chapter? What sets them apart from other organizations that you've worked with in the past? Um, I think first and foremost, um, what was just so amazing were the people that I dealt with. They've had such a realness of a commitment. Um, well, our wonderful Jomana here was, uh, aside from Dr. Roos, um, was Jomana. And it was like, okay, take over, you know, just, um, yeah. she was not only, I just felt such a connection from the first time that I met her. So aside from that, you know, she just connected us with great people that, uh, they encouraged us to come to a fundraiser, the disco. I don't know if you were there, Meredith, or. Yeah, I think uh, I was with kids. You know, just uh -huh. said, hey, come join us. And it was, it was just so warm. <laughs> and uh, the resources, the people that, you know, that they introduced us to was so um, amazing. And 
that was probably something that really stands out in my mind. Okay. And just the opportunities, meeting Meredith, going to Washington, D.C. I mean, it's, I'm sure Meredith can contribute significantly. Yeah, yeah Meredith, well, how was your experience like with the ALS Association? What did they mean to you? Well, I would say everything Ann said. Um, Jumana always let us know ahead of time what we would be needing. So if we were going to be needing a new piece of um, equipment, she'd say, you're going to want to get this now so you're ready and you can learn to use it. So we were always prepared. And that was one of the things that was most helpful for us. We were always prepared, at least from that perspective. We always knew what we were going to need and you know what we'd have to do. Um, Jumana, Bruce went online after we got back from Mayo Clinic. He went online to the ALS Association and he, whatever he did, he filled whatever in. Jumana, I think, called him the next day. There was just no lag time and got us hooked up right away. Um, that says a lot right there because not every organization does that. Yeah. And I have to say, Jumana, that I talked to both Ann and Meredith separate, completely separately. They had no idea what my conversations with the other one were. And they both said the exact same sentence at one point, that Jumana is their angel. They said the exact same sentence, the exact same way. I mean, they were gushing about you. You're asking, you, you paid them. I bribed them. <laughs> no, I mean, and the three of you, and Ann, you just brought this up. You guys, one of the things that we do is during advocacy, a select group of people go to Washington and you guys get to meet with policymakers. You meet with politicians. I mean, Jamana, you can explain that a little bit better, but you guys went there and Ann, that's where you and Meredith, you guys actually met there and it spawned yeah. into this sort of lifelong friendship and support for each other. Tell me about that. Um, Bruce was so excited to go. So we decided to go and, you know, there's always things to arrange because I've got dogs and everything, but, um, he was still able to walk then, so it was early on. And, and Dan was, I think, newly um, diagnosed. Bruce had been diagnosed the previous summer, uh, fall. And it was just, it was a really neat trip. It was kind of a whirlwind trip, but we met a lot of people and Bruce and Dan just hit it off. I think because they had a lot in common. They both were businessmen, um, successful businessmen. And they both, of course, had lovely wives who were supporting them. <laughs> of course, we can't leave that part out. <laughs> and they just, they were both such positive guys. And I think that they really hit it off. <clears throat> we met sometime after that for a couple of times and had dinner and that sort of thing. And I think that um, they would have loved to have gotten together more, but it got harder and harder. But uh, that trip to Washington was very eye-opening. I'd never, I'd been to Washington DC once before, but I'd never done any of that. Um, and you said we talked to politicians. We actually mostly talked to their aides. Okay. The only actual politician we met was our congressman, Bill Foster, who was wonderful. Um, the mm -hmm. rest of them we met their aides. But still, I mean, it was really cool. And it was neat to be in those buildings. And unfortunately, I mean, we were talking about this too on the phone. Uh, everyone that went on that trip those, that year with you guys that had ALS has passed by now. And again, this is just another reminder of why we do what we do, because you guys made this amazing core group of friendship. And unfortunately, that group has has passed on. But what I think is so great and what I was saying in the intro is life has this crazy way of, I think, bringing people together when they need each other most. And, you know, Anne, Anne and Meredith, you guys had so much in common. You have such a similar story and you guys were there to sort of lean on each other and get through it together. So you, you're not alone. You had someone else that was walking those same shoes with you. You guys had each other to lean on. And I feel like that that really is priceless. And you guys still stay in touch, right? You guys are still friends to this day. We still mm -hmm. stay in touch with uh, texts. Someday we're going to get together, all of us, uh, some of the others we know, because, you know, now that people are being vaccinated, we might be able to get together. <laughs> Right, I know. Once this crazy COVID decides to just take a hike, and we're all we're all tired of it, we're ready for you to go away. COVID, <laughs> take a hint already. My goodness. Well, Jumana, what do these ladies mean to you? Because you've been right there in the middle of all this too. Compassion and friendship. Um, the love that they showed. Um, they taught me a lot, actually. Um, uh, you know, patience also. Um, I, I just wish I have that same patience with my own family, the way they, they show it with their own. Um, it, it's not easy because we, we, we see how hard it is uh, as caregivers to, to handle all that and not have the support that you deserve, you know? Um, 
you're on your own basically like you have family to support you but not in the same way like you need to be supported so they did it and they were amazing they kept a smile on their face so that shows me strength um i just wish i i can do that one day for my own family yeah i think they were Sorry. You bring up a great point because, yeah, I mean, Anna Meredith, you guys were, tw I mean, you were caregivers. You, ha you had to step into that role oh, yeah. on top of being mothers, on top of being wives. And now you're taking oh, care of your husbands, you know, 24 seven. How did you guys balance all of that? I think it helps having adult children. I can't imagine what it must be like for people who have small children at home. Um, my kids are all grown up and they were real helpful. The two that live in the area were that came almost every weekend and helped me out. And when we went to Wisconsin, they all came because that mm -hmm. house isn't accessible up there. And I mean, they were just always there for me. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I was just going to say, I think ultimately something that people don't realize is that ALS just doesn't affect the person, um, mm -hmm. as with so many diseases, but it really physically, right. mentally, emotionally, um, affects every part of your life, every relationship, your children, mm -hmm. um, you know, your friends. And uh, it's, it's, I, it's at first I was very sensitive in trying to explain that. And then it, it, I think it's something, unless you know firsthand, do you really understand? Right. Mm -hmm. It's true because, and thankfully people don't see it unless they're going through it. Thank goodness. Cause we don't want anyone going through this, but you're right. I mean, when they're going through this, it doesn't stop. I no. mean, every little detail you think about this, you have to be able to be that person and do for your husband because they can't do it. That right. takes, yeah, it takes a toll on everybody. So you ladies, you guys are superheroes. I mean, Jaman is right. What you guys, not only what you went through, but you kept a smile on your face and you were staying happy, staying positive and staying in this. I mean, you guys are really special women. Dan and Bruce were very lucky. They were very smart men. <laughs> they knew what they were doing when they picked the two of you. Okay, speaking of these really smart, amazing men, <laughs> Meredith, we have talked on the phone about how Bruce loves to cook. I'm, so, I'm really jealous of that, by the way. <laughs> so Julia Child was sort of his muse, his end-all, be-all. He loved to cook so much. So now that Bruce has passed, is there a, a favorite dish you had of his or a dish that you see and you instantly think about Bruce? You know, there's not anything specific. He had some outstanding things he did. He made a turkey dinner for um, my whole family for Thanksgiving one time, mm -hmm. a la Julia Child, and it was, it was amazing. Um, so at Thanksgiving, I sometimes think of that. Uh, my younger brother hasn't ever stopped talking about that. He was so impressed. Um, Bruce just would try almost anything. He loved to cook. He didn't bake. I'm the baker, but he loved to cook and he would just get these wild ideas. He watched all the cooking shows. He'd get these ideas and say, I'm going to try that. Uh, he, he taught all the kids to cook. They're all wonderful cooks now. Um, and it just, it was a wonderful thing. He had the patience to teach them and I didn't. Oh, what a wonderful match that is too. He loved to cook. You love to bake. I, where was my invite to come over and invite <laughs> all of this? That sounds so perfect. Speaking of invites, you have a tradition you still keep on his birthday. Well, what's the Bruce birthday tradition? After he, he died a week before his birthday. Um, and so all my kids were here. My son from North Carolina was in town and we've decided that first year we celebrated his birthday all together. It was before COVID and we, um, my younger son actually kind of took the helm of the cooking because he handles his dad really well. And so he, as he cooked and everybody else contributed, we played Bruce's favorite music really loud and um, just had a wonderful time. We had old fashions to drink because before his birthday that year, he said, I want an old fashioned for my birthday. So we had them for him. Mm. So every year we do the same thing. Last year we did it on Zoom. We we drank to Bruce on Zoom. I know. I know. It's it's like a chain reaction. This always happens. <laughs> it is. Oh god. So prior to. Um, but this year we had our dinner live because um, we've been very careful. And now of course we're all vaccinated too. But we had his birthday here at my house and my kids cooked a wonderful meal again. 
Uh, my older son couldn't be here, but um, the other two were here. And I've got two grandsons now, so of course they were here. So grandma got to spoil them while the kids did all the cooking and making of old fashions. And so I, you know, I think we'll probably do that every year for a long, long time. I love That's that. Great. That's Thanks. such a great way to just remember him and yeah, just keep celebrating him and keep celebrating his legacy. A lot mm -hmm. of our friends then will text me or email me and say, we're having an old fashioned for Bruce tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of expanded, which is kind of neat. Oh, I love that. We should have had, I don't like old fashions, but I would have done that for Bruce tonight. <laughs> I should have thought that. We should have all had some old fashions. We could have cheered tonight. <laughs> I do it once a year because I'm really more of a beer drinker. Bruce and I were into craft beers. That was one of the things that we really loved doing was trying them out. So, Well, speaking of these memories and these things that make you think of, Bruce, this is actually, May is ALS Awareness Month, and we are celebrating the fact that every moment matters. So mm -hmm. all, all of you ladies, I mean, what moments in your life stick out as maybe your favorite moments or just your best memories? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Don't all don't all jump in at once. <laughs> I was just talking. I'm gonna let Anne go first. <laughs> um, I think one of the most special times for me, um, if we're referring to after a diagnosis, is uh, Dan was um, president of a company and he left that, which was very difficult for him. Um, and we decided for the first time ever, we drove down to Florida and we spent a month away uh, from everything and everyone. And uh, it was not an easy trip because at that point it was, uh, well, actually Dan first started really falling. He was wearing braces and the orthotics and um, he fell a couple times in the middle of the street and refused help. And, uh, but irregardless, it really mm -hmm. made us dig deep into our relationship and kind of set the tone for the remainder of uh, you know, the time that we had intertwined with ALS and everything. I don't, mm -hmm. I know, Meredith, you did a lot of traveling after Bruce yeah. was diagnosed as well, right? Yeah, and I've been posting that for ALS Awareness Month. We did a lot of traveling while we could. But the times that stand out most for me are my daughter's wedding, which was November 2013. He was able to dance with her. He was able to walk her down the aisle. And he gave his father the bride speech, and yeah. it was wonderful. Um, my daughter, my son, my younger son got married in um, 2015, August 2015. And even though he was in his wheelchair, we made a grand entrance. I was sitting on his lap, and he zoomed in on his wheelchair. So everybody thought that was fun. Um, and before that, we had gone to Alaska. So that was our big trip. Um, everybody should go to Alaska. It's awesome. And I'm so glad we got to do that. And then, of course, the last and most amazing thing was when my first grandson was born. Bruce got to meet him, and his name is Bruce. So. I love it. Oh, I love it. I'm so glad you brought that up. They named him after Grandpa Bruce. They did, and my son tells him about his grandpa all the time and shows him pictures. And I made a scrapbook for the kids for, um, <clears throat> for our dinner celebration this year, I made a scrapbook of Bruce and I had asked people and Jumana actually contributed to this as well. I asked people for their favorite stories of Bruce. And so I put that all together. It's about 85 pages long and wow. I've got pictures and stories from old friends, new friends, family. Um, and we're going to do that as a family someday too, and talk about our own favorite stories of him and put those in another book. So, Oh my gosh. Jamana, how about you? I mean, do you have a favorite moment just in your about anything, just a favorite moment in your life? <laughs> she looks frozen. <laughs> oh, Jamana, we love you so much. We love Jumana. <laughs> Well, ladies, let's dive in. We're going to play a game. I'm not sure if Jumana is going to come back and join us or not. We'll we'll try if internet is permitting, but she's coming. Oh, she's coming back already. <laughs> Jumana's playing her own game over here. Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> um, we are going to play. Dun, da, da, da. Guess who? Okay. I know. It's it's pretty much exactly like it sounds. Guess who? So you guys are already prepared. You've got some signs with some names on it. And basically, 
we are going i'm going to ask a question who is something and you guys are just going to put the sign up of who that is whether it's dan whether it's bruce whether it's you know ann meredith jamana whoever it is let's find out who tells the best jokes oh, not me <laughs> <laughs> not me either ann i'm with you i'll just go with bruce because i have no idea okay Bruce oh, Jemana. Jemana's a joke teller? <coughs> I did not know that. Good to know. <laughs> I, I'm terrible at jokes. <laughs> I don't remember them ever. That's my problem. <laughs> I start a joke and then I just butcher it because I don't yeah. actually remember, remember what's happening. Yeah, okay, I'm right there with you. Uh, who smiles the most? Oh my goodness. Okay, I know that. Ooh. Oh, I guess I could do this. this. Ah, okay. We think it's you. The consensus of the group is you. Who's, who's the most spontaneous? Ooh. Ooh. Mm. I'm going to go out on the limb here because I really don't know, but he always seemed like he was to me. Yeah, yeah. he was. Okay, I'll go with you. <laughs> and you, you copycat. <laughs> Bruce was an engineer. He had to think everything out and plan okay. it. Well, okay. this was my. These are my choices. So, <laughs> I love it. No, I think we're gonna go with Dan on this one. Yeah, I think Bruce would be too analytical. Yeah, he'd have to plan for stuff. Yeah, who is the best dancer? Oh, Man, no. Who laughs the most? Oh, I know that no, one. No, Whatever it is. <laughs> Oh. oh my gosh! I don't know because I don't know if Anne can dance, but I'm gonna say because I um, know. Uh, oh, put, put yourself up there. And it's it's not not I lost one. <laughs> I did you do dances in our that. madrigal dinners. We had to learn dances, old, old like pavans and stuff. And I was yeah, like, you got the you got the music theory. You got the music <laughs> beat, the rhythm. The I have no rhythm okay. and no beat. So <laughs> I'm a better you. singer than I am a dancer. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, you you kind of actually segue into the next one, except it's not the best. Who's the worst singer? Oh my gosh. Well, I can't raise my hand and nominate. Bruce myself. was an excellent singer. Bruce had a beautiful bass baritone voice. So I'm gonna echo Dan only. No, that's a good choice, and Dan would admit it. Yeah. Dan's a bad singer. Did he ever sing, Ann? Did he try to sing for you? Oh, all the time. Love it. Bruce I bet you that's what won you over. Bruce and I were in choir together for years. That was one of the things we did together. And he had a lovely voice. Oh, I'm so jealous of that. That's so great. I'm, I'm, I was dancing from us, so that's good. Uh, he sings, he cooks, he does everything. My goodness, I understand. Oh, Jemana, <laughs> Jemana, <laughs> I'm with you. I will tie with you as the absolute worst singer. Who, ooh, who's most likely to have a secret stash of sweets? Oh my gosh, I can answer that one right off the bat here. Hold on. I also nominate myself. <laughs> oh, Meredith, I know your chocolate fix. I have a chocolate drawer and we joke that it's my secret chocolate drawer, but everybody knows it's there. Yes. <laughs> you know, I only wrote this question. I was writing this question because I opened my bedside table, my nightstand, and it's filled with chocolate. So I'm gonna call myself out on that. I have to keep I have to keep candy by me at all times because you never know when you're gonna need some chocolate, you know? That's right. Ooh, let's see. Who's uh, who's most likely to get lost? We know it's not Dan. Um <laughs> Jum I don't know. I was thinking Jumana too, but yes. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm an engineer, so I'm good with maps. <laughs> Plus, I've got GPS on my phone now, so you know. I love yeah, it. I live my ways now since Dan introduced me. <laughs> uh, who? Ooh, who would be the best contestant on Jeopardy? Oh. Ooh, definitely um, not Jumana. Definitely not. Definitely well, not I either. would have to say one of these two fellas here would have been because yeah, I would have to agree. Smart, smart yeah. guys. Ah. I would get tongue tied on any show like that. And you know, if I watch the show, I'll say, Oh, I know that answer. But to be on TV, no way. Okay. So they'd be Bruce and Dan would be a great lifeline for yes. that who wants to be a millionaire if you got to yeah. is that still a thing? Phone a friend. I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. 
Our last question of the night, uh, who made the world a better place? I know the answer to this one. Can you just say all of them? Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to say a five-way tie. All of you, personally. All of you. All of you. Yeah. Personally, it was you. definitely Jumana because she made life easier for us all. Oh, oh but yes, everybody else. Everybody, everybody. It's so true. <laughs> all of you. Ah, uh, I love it. I love these signs. Yeah, all of you. I love learning all these fun things about everybody. <laughs> Now, speaking of, before we, because I told you guys, this is my problem. I want to talk to you ladies all night. I, we didn't even get to touch on <laughs> half the things I wanted to talk to you about. We had so many more great stories I want to dive into. But you know what? We, we just didn't get there this time. We didn't get there this time. But before we go, I want to, I want to hear if Dan and Bruce were here tonight, what do you think they would want to say to everybody watching, everyone here on Twitch? Well, I can tell you what Bruce would say, because he used to say it all the time. And Jumana will remember this because she, I think, mentioned it in her story of Bruce. Every day he would say, I could make this day my best day or I could make it my worst day. And I choose to make it my best day. Mm. And that was his philosophy throughout his illness until he okay. just couldn't anymore. Okay. Dan wouldn't be so kind. He'd say we need more funding for ALS research. There'd be no doubt about that. Absolutely. We do. We second that, Dan. We, you know, and if he was here, I would like all of you, you know, to echo that we need more funding and you can do that. You guys can be a part of that by donating on our Tiltify campaign. So do it for Dan. Do it for Dan and Bruce tonight and make a donation in their names to Tiltify. Because again, all the money goes to fighting to find a cure and helping provide such needed support, assistance, equipment, all of that to those dealing with ALS. Jamana, what do you think? What do you think those gentlemen would say? You know them if they were here tonight. Oh. <laughs> We've stunned her into silence yet again. But on that, they, on the they, note. They say, we love you, Jamana. Yes, right. they would. They, and I know. Was angel too. Um, he did. I know they'd give anything to have one more day with both of you because you guys both have the most beautiful love stories. And I am so glad for every second that you got to spend right. with Dan and Bruce. And as unfortunate as this, as you guys crossing, crossing paths was, I am so glad that the three of you ladies found your way to each other. And now I'm so glad that I got to meet you and bring you into the sunflower family that we have going on. <laughs> So thank you ladies so much. I want to stay in touch with you girls. And again, in the name of Bruce and Dan, everybody make sure to donate to the Tiltify campaign. And as they were, you know what, live, live your life with that positive attitude too. You get to make every day your best day. So let's do that. Let's keep making memories and let's keep making moments that are worth it for Bruce and for Dan. Guys, thank you so much. Anything you want to say before we toss it out? Hi kids. My daughter made a comment there. So I just want to say hi to my kids. I want to say thank you to Corey. He was my wingman through all of this. Without him, yep. I couldn't be there. So. Okay. Couldn't have done it. So. Thank, well, you. thank you. Thank you guys so much. I will talk to you soon. Okay, thank you, you too. And have a great rest of your night. Ah, these ladies, seriously, we, we this show needs to be about five hours long so we can get to all the good stuff that I want to get to. I love them so much and I can't even imagine. I want all of you at home watching this. <gasps> Swiss Meatball, thank you for jumping in and donating to our Tiltify campaign in the name of Bruce and Dan. I know they would, would appreciate it so much. And I guarantee, especially with the humor that we've been hearing they have, they would absolutely love that name. So <laughs> thank you, Swiss Meatball. And as did you notice, he didn't even use S's um, or whoever Swiss Meatball is. He went in for the dollar signs because he is donating that money to our Tiltify campaign. Thank you so much. And I do, on a serious note, I want everybody watching tonight, I want you to take a second and think about the people that you love most in your life and just tell them that you love them. You know, for Bruce and Dan, their, their stories, their love stories got cut short. So make sure you are always remembering and holding the people that you love that much closer and telling them. 
Now, also another quick plug before we jump into our next guest. Um, this is really, really exciting news, actually. Uh, if it, any baseball fans out there, and if you've heard of Lou Gehrig's disease, you know that ALS got its nickname, Lou Gehrig's disease, from the New York Yankee baseball player, Lou Gehrig's, who was donated, or donated, my goodness, I'm so excited, I can't, I'm losing all my words, who was diagnosed with ALS. Well, the MLB has come together to celebrate and they have come up with a LG four day, which is happening on June 2nd. And it's, it's MLB wide. So every major league baseball team is taking part in this, which is so exciting. They're all celebrating this on the same day, guys, this is so huge. This is an annual awareness day with every major league baseball team. So we want you to be a part of it too. This is happening on June 2nd. You don't have to wait until then to be a part of this. We want you to get on your favorite MLB gear and post a picture of you wearing it. And while you're doing it, post it to social media, share it, tell people why you're doing this. Let's spark the conversation. Let's bring some more ALS awareness. And we want you to make sure you hashtag LG4 day and hashtag us ALS association, ALSA or ALSA Chicago. We want, we want you in on this. So make sure you do jump in LG4 day on June 2nd. Told you that was really exciting. So I hope there's a lot of baseball fans out there. If you're watching, tell us who you're rooting for. Is it the Cubs? Is it the Sox? Is it the Cardinals? We want to know. I know my dad's probably watching. He's going to jump in on this because we are a diehard Cubs family. So Cub lovers, you're my people. Sox fans, I still love you. I'll, I'll let that one go. But Cubbies, you guys are my people. So let's jump in. Let's get to our very next guest. <sighs> Gosh, you think this stuff gets easier to talk about, but nope, it doesn't. <laughs> My next guest, John, married the love of his life and got to spend 30 beautiful years raising a family and making dreams come true with his beautiful life, Rana. They had plans of retirement bliss and traveling the world and doing all kinds of wonderful things together. However, life had a different plan and the biggest wrench of all was thrown in and their plans were completely shattered. What seemed to be carpal tunnel in her wrists actually turned out to be an ALS diagnosis. In 2013 for Rana, John lost his wife and his best friend two short years later. Here to tell us all about Rana and her beautiful story and his journey with ALS, please welcome tonight to the show, John Shanks. Hi, John, how's it going? It's going fine. It's going uh, fine. Well, first off, you and I are both talkers, so this will be a challenge for both of us. Um, can you tell me in 90 seconds, can you tell me about Rana? Wow. I know, that's hard. How do you do that? How do you tell about her magnificence in 90 seconds? Uh, Rana was a genuine person. You knew who Rana was as soon as you met her. She was not pretentious. Uh, she was a great storyteller. She loved to make fun of herself. Uh, she could tell a story like nobody else, uh, especially if you could hear it from a truck driver or a sailor. Um, <laughs> She was also a girly girl. She uh, loved to be pampered, and her nickname that everybody knew was the Queen. Um, loved to have her nails done every week, loved to have her hair done. Uh, she made um, greeting cards with uh, some friends, um, her and her sister, and uh, it morphed into something more that they, were, they are now my friends. Um, well, Rana was someone who, who would tell you what was on her mind, and she would also listen to you. Um, one of the things my uh, brother said when we were talking about Rana was, if you walked into a gathering of people that you may not know, whether it be a wedding, uh, a funeral, a conference, uh, a birthday, um, driving home that night, the one person you would remember was meeting Rana. She would leave a lasting impression on anyone. Um, and she still does. Um, she's still in my thoughts. And um, I try to do everything to keep her there. It's, it's tough. She sounds like my kind of woman. I love this. Queen Rana, 
She's a great lady. I love hearing these stories about her. And I, I also love that you found your way to us, to the ALS Association's Greater Chicago Chapter. What has this chapter meant to you? And, and what did it mean to you and Rana through this whole experience? They were my, uh, they were my call. They were my advocate. They were my educators. Uh, they were there. Um, they were the ones that brokered talking to the insurance companies. Um, again, as in the previous people that talked, um, this throws your life upside down completely. Um, you don't know where to turn. You don't know who you should talk to. And it was one phone call to the ALS Association of Greater Chicago um, when we were finally told at Mayo and confirmed uh, they gave us some information, and they said, you know, here's who you should call. And, and the Chicago chapter was who we called, and uh, they became my lifeline. Uh, they were only about a block away from my office downtown. Uh, it was nothing for me to be able to go over and talk to somebody there because I was still working full time as well as taking care of my wife, and I had CNAs that would come during the morning. So my day would be, the CNAs would come, I would head off to downtown, um, then I would come home in the evening and relieve the CNAs, and I was responsible for taking care of her in the evenings and on the weekends. And uh, I had family help and friends, but uh, my questions, uh, they were there to help, uh, especially getting me things that I didn't think I needed, but before you knew it, um, what I considered, and I, I think Tony Cook was the one who told me this, was the things that you think are extravagant right now will be a necessity tomorrow, and before you know it, you will need it. And he was so true. Uh, whether it was the BiPAP machine, ventilators, uh, wheelchairs, uh, scooters, uh, helping us get the home checked out to make sure that it was... Um, ADA compliant, uh, it just the things you can't even think about, as well as uh, getting the insurance company involved so that we didn't even have to deal with the insurance company. He handled everything. Um, yeah. One of the things the ALS Association, with them being as close as they were to my office, and, and as you know, uh, because you came over, was every year, um, well, I worked for an engineering firm downtown, and uh, they always did lunch and learns for the employees uh, where they would have the vendors come in and, and do their spiel about whatever it was, whether it was a, a new heating technique or, or a way of ventilating or their new product, whether it was a fan or something. And I, um, I went to my bosses and asked them if I could do a lunch and learn and actually have the ALS Association uh, the Chicago chapter come over and do a lunch and learn and they did and you were one of the ambassadors who came over because one of the things I found out was nobody knows what ALS is unless you know who Lou Gehrig was which a lot of people didn't in our age and because we don't have a Lance Armstrong or somebody else to st stand up and say I beat it you didn't have anybody so I wanted to educate the people in my office on what this disease was and what I was fighting as well as what my wife was fighting and then I also could enlist them at that point in time to be my team or on my team and it was great um, I had people that lived in Chicago that took the train out to Cantini with their bikes and rode their bikes back afterwards or people drove out from Chicago to walk the walk with me. Um, it really brought a lot of people together. Um, and it educated you, brought a really good point. you brought up a really good point. I want to jump in about the walk because your team name was incredible. <laughs> tell, us, tell us your team name for the walk because you do the walk every year. You're doing it again this year. So no. I mean, Tell people about your team and tell people why it's so important. We, if you're watching the show, get signed up. Get on a walk team. Join this team if you want to. Start your own. Get involved. 
Tell us about the walk team. Correct. My my team aptly named was Queen Rana and her jesters, because that's all we were. We were there to make her laugh um, and to enjoy her jokes. Um, I've had the same team name. It makes it easy for making uh, T-shirts every year. It's the same <laughs> color. Um, but everybody that shows up that's on my walk, um, we all wear the same T-shirts, and I have them ordered ahead of time so that we make sure that whatever size you need, down to you know, six-year-old kids that want to come walking with us to um, people that are weight challenged, as they'll say, or height challenged, however you want to call it. Um, they all could make it. And every year we had a great turnout. Obviously last year it couldn't happen. This year is not going to happen. But it was a chance to reconnect with people um, that um, Rana worked with. Um, these were people that I kept in contact with, the ladies that she made cards with, uh, friends, family, um, people come and go, but um, people were always there for the walk. And one of the things that I had uh, challenged everybody was, um, besides making my own donation, um, I challenged everybody that did make a donation that I would match that donation 100%. And it was uh, my personal goal uh, to try to help eradicate this disease. It is the, the worst thing I can think of to have happen to somebody, uh, to have somebody that is fully cognizant uh, of everything that is going on around them but can't, um, can't yeah. well, for me it was communication. Um, because Rana lost the ability to speak, and that was the one thing um, that we enjoyed was her laughter, her storytelling. Um, so it, it it's tough. I mean, it, 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 is, it is tough. It is you tough. Saw, you saw this firsthand, and I do want to jump before before we run out of time too much. Uh, we had talked on the phone about some really beautiful traditions that you have, two of them in particular that really stuck out in my mind, um, that despite all of this, uh, losing the ability to walk, losing the ability to talk, I mean, she was Queen Rana and she still knew what was important and what was important, what she loved was having her nails done. So you guys had a tradition every Wednesday, right? Tell me right. about this, your Wednesdays in your house. Right, she always, uh, she had acrylic nails and she always wanted to have her toenails and fingernails done, and then she had her hair done. Um, we found a salon in the local Bartlett area that could handle a wheelchair. And so every Wednesday, uh, I would work from home in the morning, and then we had a standing appointment down there where we would take the van down there with the CNA, and Rana would have her nails done, whatever the color, whatever the season, because you had to be, you know, seasonal, um, toenails, fingernails, and then she would also have her hair done. And that was something that we got to do together every Wednesday um, all the way up to the end. And it, uh, the funny thing about it was I always just went to uh, a salon and had my hair cut that we used to go to, but they kept trying to talk me into doing mani petties and I kept saying, I don't need a mani petty. Well, I now have a mani petty and I still go to that same salon and they give me a mani petty and give me a haircut every six weeks like clockwork. And it's, uh, again, it's another way to remember her. And they also did a uh, fundraiser for her uh, after she was diagnosed and raised several thousands of dollars uh, which I matched, but it, more importantly, uh, it was the impact she had on those people, and it still carries on to today. It's true. She was a special. That says a lot about her and how amazing she was that she inspired all of this generosity in so many people. And also, another awesome tradition that we talked about is her birthday, and you do something pretty special every year. Again, COVID messed things up for one year, but outside of that, you have an amazing yeah. birthday tradition, a lot like Meredith, who was on the show earlier. You guys are both celebrating in such special ways. 
So what happens every year on Rana's birthday? Rana's, Rana's birthday was right around Thanksgiving, but she always made sure that she had her birthday. There was no ifs, ands, or buts because the queen has to be remembered for her birthday, even if it fell on Thanksgiving. And what I continued to do even when she got sick was we got family members together um, and it actually morphed to where it became family members, then it was neighbors, it was friends, it was people that Rana worked with, uh, it was people I worked with, um, it was people we hadn't seen in 30 years that found out about it, but I take everybody out to a local restaurant, pick up the tab, um, because that's what I had to do with Rana. You know, the queen doesn't deal with money. That's, nope. that's off in the back. Just like the royal family, they don't talk about money. But uh, it's a gathering on her birthday, every, every birthday, whether it's on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Saturday, or whatever. But I take everybody that wants to uh, come out and uh, pay for dinner. And then uh, my wife uh, was a lover of birds, hummingbirds, butterflies, and flowers. And um, if you ever come to our house, I have so many pictures of flowers, hummingbirds, and butterflies and the like. Um, one of the things I do for every woman that comes uh, gets the, and here's my, my Costco plug, gets the uh, double dozen of roses from me to take home and every child that comes gets some kind of um, floral, whether it's a succulent uh, or, or the such that they can take home to remember the evening also. So it's a, a parting favor. And the only thing I ask every woman that takes the roses home is they must send me a picture of the arrangement so that Rana can see uh, she can see what they have done to remember her. Um, it's my way of thanking everybody for remembering Rana. And again, then we tell the stories about Rana, and there are many um, that we have um, to remember her by. And that's that's what I do, and it's what I have done. And again, pandemic stepped in, and we weren't able to do it. We tried. We tried many different restaurants, but we couldn't. You know, a lot of them at that point in time were not holding reservations, um, but we will continue that tradition this year. So, well, speaking of how amazing she is, is another thing that just oh, I mean, it, it speaks to the type of woman she was. You know, you and Rana had these plans. You had these great plans. You were going to retire. I think you told me at seventy, Rana was going to work in the card shop. You guys were going to travel, and you kept. We all do it. You kept saying, we're going to do it when we retire. We're going to do it when we retire. You kept pushing yep. things off in life and waiting for that moment. And obviously, life had other plans and you didn't get to make it to retirement. But um, what Rana said something to you that completely changed your whole outlook on the future. And I think the way you live your life to this day. What was it that Rana said to you that was a big change in your life? Well, she told me to not stop living. Um, yeah, we had these the, the plans and had worked with financial planner and, and actually she was going to retire at the age of 60 and uh, yeah, to keep herself busy, she was going to work in a card shop um, and I think it was more so she could get out and talk um, and tell stories to uh, anybody that would listen to her um, and I was going to continue working because that's all I knew. I was going to work. I was going to work, and then, yeah, I'd retire at seven. And then we would go on, and we'd take trips, and we'd travel the world, and we'd see adventures, and we'd do all that. The only problem is she was diagnosed right before uh, she turned 60 and uh, passed by the time she was 62. Um, but she did tell me um, to continue living, and I had... Uh, I had her permission to continue living and to do whatever it was that I wanted to do. 
Um, I asked for her permission to remarry. Um, I had her permission to sell the house, to move, uh, to begin traveling. And actually, um, I have done that over the last six years. I have traveled around the world with different people. Um, I have traveled to Canada with my youngest son on a Hall of Fame tour. Uh, it actually was, it happened to be in 2016. Uh, we actually were in Cleveland the tail end of October. Little did we know that the Cubs would be back there a couple weeks later being crowned champions. Um, went to Vancouver with him to see the Hockey Hall of Fame, something I had never done, but I told him, hey, whatever you want to do, I'm up for it. I uh, went to New Zealand. I ziplined in New Zealand. I orbed in New Zealand. I climbed in a glacier in New Zealand. Um, I got to go to Tahiti uh, and actually stay in a glass bottom uh, room above the water. Uh, I got to swim with sharks and manta rays. I uh, got to swim with a dolphin. Um, I am now planning, and, and my walk's going to be a little different this year. Uh, I am actually going to Iceland in the middle of June with uh, my sister and her boyfriend and his sister and her husband, who I have traveled to, Tahiti and Costa Rica. Um, we're going to travel and spend 10 days or actually 12 days in Iceland traveling around the country and I'm bringing my team t-shirts with and we are going to take pictures there whether it's at the lip of the volcano that's active or at the waterfalls of it there or even at the Reykjavik museums um, but that will be my walk and I'm still getting my team together so if anybody can meet me in Reykjavik um, I'll be there on the 16th through the 29th, or actually the 28th. Um, but please, I'll be there. Look me up. Um, okay. But well, that's one thing you have a good memory. You retired early. You didn't even wait till that 70. You retired early in the name of your wife, and you yeah. did it. You did what she said. You started living all those dreams the two of you had together. You're living them out and bringing her along with you every step of the way. I am. It was it was a hard thing to do because I was a workaholic, and uh, after she passed, and I realized that uh, through therapy and talking to other people, uh, it was like, hey, you need to experience life, and that's what I'm doing now in her memory. And, and I how really do everywhere I go. Yeah, can you tell me just, just quickly? And, you know, two sentences. How has Rana changed your life? Um, she allowed me to laugh at it. Um, she allowed me to enjoy the moment, uh, to actually sit down and, and relax. Uh, you don't need to be go 24-7. It's, you can sit down on a summer's day out on, you know, on a screened in porch and listen to the birds, fall asleep, take a nap. Um, those were not things that I was used to doing, but it's how I live my life now. Um, it's 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 allowed me to it's allowed me to change my thinking and to say it's okay not to do something all the time. Sit back and enjoy life, but also experience it. And again, that's why I said these these trips are all about the experience. And it's whether I'm talking to my kids or or other family members is like, hey, I'm going here because I don't know if I'm ever going to have this chance again, but I don't want to miss it. Um, and that includes taking a hike and looking at the sunset. It's like, hey, you may not see this. Or the Aurora Borealis. or going out to see the polar bears in northern Canada. Um, I want to experience it all. And uh, she's the one that's pushing me along to say, hey, do it. Enjoy it. You deserve it. I know she is. I know she is so proud of you and I, that you're just taking her along with this, all of these journeys, all these special moments, you're bringing her along with you. Yeah. So just, she is such a special woman. And as we go out, I would love to hear when you get to see her again, when the two of you are face to face again, what's the first thing you're gonna tell her?
I missed you more today than yesterday, but not as much as I will tomorrow. Um, she was my love, my life, my best friend, and my wife. And I just want to hear her voice again and have her tell me some more stories because she could tell them. She can make a whole room light up. And, I, and I'll never forget it. Sorry. No way. Never. None yeah. of us are ever going to forget Queen Rana. She yeah. is here and she is, I know that she is partying up there. <laughs> She's that partying. Her, her nails are done. Her hair is done. <laughs> she is just partying it up and Oh man, she is waiting for you and setting up the best party up there in heaven <laughs> you could ever imagine. She is holding court. I'm sure she is. <laughs> no ifs, ands, or buts. I love that, John. Thank you so much for sharing her stories and for living every day in her memory and making the most of it and reminding all of us to do the exact same thing because it is so important to make every day matter and make every day count. It is. Thank you, Susan. It was it was my pleasure being on. I know you had to twist my arm because I'm not one to come on live. Uh, I like to stand in the background. Um, but this is for a worthy cause. And I, again, um, since I was not able to uh, do a walk last year, um, and I actually, the mini walk wasn't really my cup of tea, but at the last minute, um, I I made a pledge that to make up for not having it at work because again everybody was at home. Um, I didn't uh, do my presentation. Um, I actually sent out my normal notice to friends, neighbors, professional people I knew, everybody I had tapped, and said this year I was going to match two hundred percent. And that's what I did last year, and that is what I'm going to do this year. Oh, um, my gosh. And again, it's – Ronnie is a big part of why I was able to retire when I did, and so I am doing everything in my power to make sure the Chicago chapter gets funding that they need for advocacy, for education, for helping the caregivers – uh, to spreading the word as well as the research. Um, again, I fervently believe in in wiping this disease out. I just, it is so horrible. I can't wish it even on my worst enemy. And um, in my lifetime, I want to see it eradicated. I hope to God it happens. I'm with you. And we're not going to give up. We're not going to stop until that happens. And I do hope that it is in our lifetime. I'm with you. Yes. Thank yeah. you so, so much, John. And anyone that is watching, if you want to join a walk team, come on this one. Join this team. Be part of Queen Rana and her gestures because you heard it right here, guys. Everything that is raised on this walk team, John is matching 200%. That is huge. You don't have to be here in Illinois. You can do this from anywhere in the world. John's going to be doing this from Iceland anywhere in the world guys take a photo take a walk join the team and john will match it 200 percent make sure you get in on this our walk to defeat als the first the very first one kicks off on june 5th so you don't want to miss this join the team john thank you so so much continue living in in the name of rana continue spreading her message and i will continue thinking about her every time i see a flower now thank you susan i appreciate it Absolutely. Have a great night. You too. <sighs> I can't, you know what? I used to be, uh, my friends used to call me Ice Queen and doing this show has completely melted my heart every episode. Um, it's so beautiful getting to share and hear these love stories and just seeing John, seeing Anne, seeing Meredith, all of our guests, seeing them light up when they get to talk about their spouses. I can't even imagine being so lucky that you get to find the love of your life and then having them ripped away from you 
much too soon because of this disease. That is why we are here. That is why we are going to keep fighting, why we're asking all of you for help so we can get closer and closer to finding a cure to end this nasty disease so we don't have to lose people in the world like Rana, like Dan, like Bruce. We want to eradicate ALS help make that happen. One of the ways you can help make that happen is joining a walk team. Make sure you check out all the information on alsachicago.org on how you can participate. We have a walk coming up in Chicago on June 5th. We've got a walk in Peoria on September 11th, Northern Illinois, September 18th, and Champaign on September 25th. And guys, remember, it costs you nothing to join. If you want to raise money, great. Hey, if you want to raise money on on uh, John's team, he'll match it 200%. But if you can't, it's okay. We just want you to participate, get signed up. We still have a lot of spots open. So please sign up and walk wherever you are. We want you to be a part of this family. And in the name of all of the people we talked to tonight, I think we can all see the common theme is just life is short. Don't put things off for the future. Do things now. Tell the people you love that you love them and keep all these stories, keep all these memories alive in your heart and just live your life to the fullest. So please come back here. Join us for our next episode. I will see you back in a couple weeks. And until then, everybody, be bright and shine your light. Thanks for another great episode of Season Sunflower Hour.